Okay, in this video, we're going to find the angle, and the angle that we're talking about is this one right here. We want to find the angle measure in degrees. So you can see we're dealing with a right triangle, and this is right because we have this little uh, notation right there, that little symbol that indicates that this triangle is or has a 90 degree angle in it. So we call this a right triangle, but these are very special triangles. Uh, in geometry and trigonometry because if we have right triangles then we could do some stuff to figure out this particular problem now if this was not a right triangle okay then we would have to use some a um, little bit more advanced trigonometry uh, called the law of sines and the law of cosines but those are for uh, other videos again this is a little bit more advanced but uh, this particular problem okay again we're dealing with a nice a uh, beautiful right triangle right here so we can just apply some basic trigonometry some trigonometric ratios and the ones that we're going to be dealing with of course are going to be sine cosine and tangent and we're going to use a couple of these to find this uh, angle measure right here now of course if you think you can uh, solve this problem i definitely suggest you just pause the video whip out your scientific calculator and go ahead and knock it out real quick of course i'm going to uh, walk through it step by step in just one second here but uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I am the founder of Tablet Class Math. I am also a middle and high school math teacher. And over uh, several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm gonna be launching uh, pre-calculus here shortly. I'm very excited about that. A lot of uh, advanced math in there. So I love to teach advanced math. I love to teach all math. But anyways, if you are um, interested in pre-calculus in a couple of weeks from now, I'll have that course launched. But uh, I also do a lot in the, in the area of uh, test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, uh, ASVAB, uh, CLEP, ACCUPLACER, ALEX exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. All those exams have a lot of math on it. And if you don't do well in the math sections, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you prepare. Just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam. If I do not, drop me a line and I will uh, give you some guidance anyways. Now, I also do a lot in the area of independent study. So if you homeschool, for example, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those uh, students that are struggling in our current math courses. But um, one thing I cannot do for you, okay, that you must do for yourself if you're truly serious about learning mathematics, that is the following. You got to take notes every day, but not just good notes. You have to take great notes. If you take great notes, okay, over decades of of teaching mathematics is just apparent to me. Those students are like engaged. Their notes are awesome. They always end up with nice little A pluses and stuff at the end of the year, which is pretty amazing. And then the reverse is true. Those students who are distracted with their cell phone, talking to their friends and doing homework or whatever in another class, really not focused on the teacher. That's the kind of what I'm getting at here. You have to really work hard at remaining focused. There's so many distractions um, out there. So if you can stay focused, you're going to be successful in learning mathematics. But the main activity to help you stay focused is your notes. Okay, notes is all about remaining uh, focused. And um, of course, writing down all the information you need to know for your course. There's a lot of details uh, in mathematics. Don't be convinced that you have one of these photographic memories because that is a fallacy. Maybe like 0.000001% of the human population really truly has that ability. But in math, there's just too many things you have to uh, um, you know, reference. Okay. So, for example, we're going to go over a few of these uh, little basic things here in a second. But uh, as you're improving in your note-taking, I have uh, detailed comprehensive math notes you can study from to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Again, you can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, let's get into, uh, get into some basic right angle trigonometry. And uh, this type of problem, typically you would face this, um, of course, in a trigonometry class. But generally speaking, you'll start uh, studying uh, right angle trigonometry in uh, geometry. Now, depending on how your um, courses are uh, structured, you might be studying this if you're, you know, you're doing algebra one and your teacher's throwing in some uh, trigonometry and geometry. So, but basically, this is introductory level 
trigonometry, and trigonometry is awesome, but more advanced trigonometry is taught generally within, like, say, pre-calculus, okay? So pre-calculus, I get into some really heavy-duty trigonometry, complex form of um, uh, trigonometric form of complex numbers, De Morves theorem, all this crazy stuff. Believe me, if you're looking for a challenge and you're like, man, let me learn some advanced math, you're going to want to check out my pre-calculus course. Uh, again, it's going to be ready in a few weeks. Okay, so let's get to the problem here. Now, first of all, we have to understand some uh, something about uh, basic trigonometry. And trigonometry, again, extremely important uh, uh, topic or subject in mathematics. Now, here we have our uh, nice little right triangle. It's three, four, five. Indeed, this is a real deal right triangle because if I use a Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to go three squared plus four squared. That is indeed equal to 5 squared. Okay, so this would be 9 plus 16. Is that equal to 25? Yes, 9 plus 16. 25 is equal to 25. This is, in fact, a actual right triangle. Now, again, you know, I'm, I'm asking you to trust me with this notation. But if you have, you just can't assume every triangle um, is right, obviously, right? Even if it looks that way, unless it has this little notation here, um, you know, that indicates that this is a 90 degree angle. And that's a very critical because we can't use these trigonometric ratios uh, unless this angle is 90 degrees. So again, if you're dealing with a uh, triangle that is not 90 degrees, we need other uh, tools, trigonometric tools. But the main thing that you uh, need to know in basic trigonometry is this little phrase right here. Uh, we pronounce it so ka toa Okay, and these are the basic trigonometric ratios, okay? We call these trigonometric ratios because a ratio is basically a comparison of two things. Effectively, it's a fraction, okay? So the first one is called, we pronounce this not sin, okay? Uh, some of you are like, it's a sin to do math. No, no, no. This is called sine, all right? And actually, we spell out the full word, S-I-N-E. But these are the little abbreviations. So S-I-N, that's the sine. This is the cosine, and this is the tangent. That's how we say that. Now, X here happens to be a uh, angle, so we could put a little degree notation there because we are working with degrees. And by the way, we measure angles, all right, by degrees. And there's another thing called radians, just as a little heads up here for some of you that may not be aware. So in your calculator, okay, your calculator has a different uh, mode. Your scientific calculator, whatever the case is, make sure it's in degree mode if you are working or you want your answer in degree because there's another mode called radians and uh, you know if you have that on radian mode you're gonna get the wrong answer you're not gonna know what's going on okay so uh, the sine of this angle is uh, equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse so let me go ahead and just uh, define this real quick because this is very very important now here is our angle right here okay now the side opposite of this angle is this side, okay? This is the opposite side. Let's just put an O right here, okay? So it's opposite of that angle. This side right here, right next to the angle, it's helping actually to form the angle, is called the adjacent side. So adjacent means next to, all right? So this is the adjacent side with reference to this angle right here. And then the longest side of a triangle is always the hypotenuse, okay? That's the H right there. So we have A, O, and H, opposite, um, adjacent, and a hypotenuse. So if we know uh, these uh, various sides, okay, these respective sides here, and we know the names, then we can kind of uh, define these trigonometric ratios. So sine of this angle, okay, is equal to so, okay, so here's a little phrase that uh, your parents and your grand, uh, grandparents learned in school, so katoa, okay, so katoa, just um, put that into your long-term memory, and uh, so this means sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and we're talking about this side over this side, okay, cosine would be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, this is how you kind of remember this little uh, these ratios is so katoa, and then tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so this is how all these ratios work. Now, of course, I'm going to show you how we use our uh, calculator to actually find the degree measure here in a second. But um, so 
Now, we're looking at this, we're like, well, which one do we use, okay? Well, in this particular problem, you can use the sine, cosine, or tangent uh, to find this angle, right? So uh, I'm gonna actually uh, use two of them. I'm gonna use the sine and the tangent just to let you know that uh, you can solve this problem using various trigonometric functions. Now, again, let's say our problem, we didn't know this side, and we were just given these two lengths, okay? So if I was only given three and four, and I don't know this side, but I want to know this angle, which one would I want to use? Well, I have the O, okay, and I have the A. So I would look over at my trigonometric ratios and like, which one has both the O and A? Oh, this one has the O and A, so I would use the tangent only to find this angle measure, okay? So keep that in mind, but in this case, we know that this is five right here. So let's go ahead and calculate this out, okay? All right, so first of all, let's define the tangent of this angle. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so that's gonna be three over four. Now that's the opposite, that's the adjacent. So tangent of this angle is three-fourths. And then the sine, okay, is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would be three over five. Okay, so you see this setup right here? So the Tangent of this angle is this number, and the sine of this angle is a different number. But you know, we're, we're both going to get the, um, both of these trigonometric ratios um, are going to get us the right answer, the same answer. So let's see how this is, uh, how we work this now. Okay, so this is very, very important. What we have to use is this function in our calculator, okay? And this is uh, for both, uh, for, it's for sine, cosine, and tangent. So if you look on your calculator, you'll see a little button here, S-I-N, all right, for uh, example, for sine. Then you uh, typically, if you're using an actual physical calculator, not an online calculator, look for like a second button, and on your calculator, you should see this little deal like this, okay? So you're going to have to hit that second button because this is the one you want, and it should appear in your uh the screen of your calculator okay so this is like the window this deal it has to have that little negative one okay not the sign you got to get that little negative one up and this is kind of like what we call the arc um function so this is arc tangent arc sine but basically what it's saying is this if i know the tangent of this angle is three fourths okay i can use this tangent negative one or this arc uh tangent i bring this function up I plug this value in, and what it's gonna, the answer is going to give me the actual angle, the measure of that angle. So it's like, hey, what angle has a tangent of three fourths? If I wanna answer this question, what angle has a tangent of three fourths? Well, when I plug this in, I get this is my answer, 36.86, and that's in degrees uh, if my calculator is in degree mode, okay? So X, <clears throat> excuse me, the angle, is in fact 36.86 degrees, and we use tangent here. But let's uh, use uh, uh, arc sine, okay? So let's go over here and do the same thing with sine. So we go sine, arc sine of three over five. In our calculator, we get 36.86, same answer, because it is the same angle, so you can get uh, the right answer using uh, different trigonometric functions. Could, we could have also used arc uh, cosine as well to get the exact same angle, because the angle is not gonna be any different. Uh, it is this angle measure, okay? So this is basic trigonometry using uh, trigonometric functions, okay? And uh, hopefully this is a nice little review or maybe you're learning this for the first time. Again, this kind of trigonometry really hopefully is not that difficult, but you know, you get into this really super advanced uh, stuff, it gets pretty sophisticated, right? And yes, a lot of, even the smart students, or I would say the smart students, even those students that you know, like super good in math here. It kind of goes like this, algebra one, people are doing great, geometry, everyone's doing good, you know, algebra two, some people are, <laughs> by the time you get to pre-calculus, even those students who were getting A's in here, uh, they got to really work hard, and it, you know, sometimes you look like that, okay? But uh, even myself, when I was going through getting my uh, math degree, I have a, a degree in theoretical mathematics, I would be like, oh, calculus one, that's easy, calculus two, well, not easy, but like, you know, I'm getting good, great grades in it, calculus three, multivariable calculus, this stuff, when I was way over here doing uh, master's level mathematics, um, abstract algebra, and all this kind of crazy stuff, I was looking like this, okay, after 
you know, intense four years of, you know, um, university level. And all my um, teachers were like PhD, Harvard, Caltech, um, very small, you know, school, uh, great education. Uh, but anyways, the bottom line is that, you know, we're all going to get challenged somewhere along the line. You just can't quit. That's just the deal. You are smart enough and you're going to have to work hard at learning some of this stuff. Okay. So again, you got to take notes. You got to stay focused. That's your part. And you got to pay attention to what your teacher is teaching. Okay. And of course, you know, be um, talking to your teacher. Now, if you need help above and beyond that, then there's so many resources that we didn't have years ago. So if you like my teaching style, I have literally thou thousand plus videos on my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time and hopefully you'll become a subscriber. Um, and also, if you like this video, please consider smashing that like button. Um, I'm posting new content all the time. I have basic to advanced math on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be um, posting just, you know, tons more of, um, of math because my passion is to help you out. Try to, I try to explain math in a clear and understandable way. So you can do well in math, but doesn't mean that you don't have to work, okay, or focus or study hard. All right, that's just kind of the nature of some of this uh, mathematics. But uh, anyways, um, one other thing too, I would suggest that if you are studying this in kind of a formal way, um, my basic right angle trigonometry, um, you can find that in my geometry course in my math help program. And of course, it'll be included in my pre-calculus course as well, along with all that awesome advanced stuff as uh you know part of the curriculum okay so with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day